um, let's look at lesson two on weather, climate, and <coughs> vegetation. Okay, uh, in this part, we're going to look at um, cloud types and possibly climatic graphs. Um, these cloud types is quite confusing uh, for students to differentiate the types and give some of their characteristics. So we're going to look at the different types and how to and differentiate them using diagrams to bring out their individual characteristics. Okay, so quickly, um, cloud, what is it? A cloud is defined as a collection of ice or water droplet in, in the air. So that's it. So um, it's a collection of ice or water droplet in the air. It's known as cloud. Now, how is cloud formed? So formation of cloud. So in the formation of cloud, we're going to look at um, the major three types of rainfall. So these types of rainfall are the major reasons why there are different types of cloud. So first is we have relief rainfall. Now relief rainfall, it occur uh, when prevailing wind pick up moisture from the sea as they travel across, across it. So if wind is coming and it picks up moisture from the sea as it travels along it. Now the moist air is forced to rise up rise over hills so the moist air is now rising so as it rises over the hill or mountains it causes the air to cool and once the air cool uh, it condenses and so to form cloud so once this cloud grows into large size it falls down as rain so you find out that this part is called the windward side and here is called the leeward side now the major reason is this side have the wind so as the air moist air here rises condense to form cloud which eventually fall to form rain so this area there will be high rainfall high rainfall in the windward side now the air here descending lack moisture they lack moisture so what will happen is the air descending here will come down without any form of cloud or rain. So here you have sometimes a little rain, which is referred to as rain shadow. So this area here, you can have drought. While this part of the mountain, you can have flooding. So here you can have things like desert. I mean, sorry, here you can have rainforest. And here you can have a desert ecosystem because of this phenomenon now the next type is convectional now the process starts when the sun heats the ground once the sun heats the ground the moisture from the ground rises so the hot surface heats up the air near it causing it to rise as the air rises, it condenses to form cloud now which now accumulate and later fall down as rain due to gravity. Then lastly, here we have the frontal rainfall. Now, this type of rainfall occur when warm air mass and cold air mass meet. So it's a point where uh, if you have a warm air mass and cold air mass coming together, they meet. Now you find out that the warm air mass is less dense so because it is less dense, it will now rise. So the point where they meet is known as ITCZ, which is Intertropical Convergence Zone. So once they converge, the warm air will now rise because it is less dense. When it rises, it condenses and now form what? Cloud. That called the ITCZ or the front. Now, the, this causes the warm air to cool down and condense, forming cloud, which later condenses, uh, growing to larger size and fall down due to gravity, forming high amount of rainfall. So that is it. Now, what are the types of cloud? 
types of cloud. Now, your syllabus will only ask you question on majorly three types, which is the stratus. You should know the stratus. You should know the um, cumulus cloud, uh, cumulus nimbus, and the serous cloud. Now, these are the four types of cloud that you get questions on usually in IGCSE geography. Now, clouds are classified into three. You, you have the low level cloud, the middle level cloud, and the high level cloud. Now, you should know that cirrus cloud is a high level cloud, while stratus cloud is a low level cloud. Cumulus cloud is also a low level cloud, but you find that a cumulus nimbus is from low to high level cloud so it's like a giant cloud so let's look at their individual features first we have stratus cloud remember we say it's a low level cloud um cumulus cumulus nimbus and cirrus so cumulus is a large cloud that is up to 10 kilometer high and across so from down up is up to 10 kilometers and across in width is also is also up to 10 kilometers so it's very giant now it resembles a giant cauliflower now it produces rain thunder and lightning usually found in spring and summer then we have the cumulus cloud which is like um cotton wool if you see it when when you have a cotton wool it looks like that so it's a middle level or correct high statistics sometimes you can just give value of it if they put it at a particular range now it is like cotton wool and it is usually white it has a flat base and it's usually broken up so you see you have one part here you have another part here it is usually discontinuous it's not joined together then we now have the stratus cloud which is a low level cloud that is close to the ground. It has complete cover, filled most of the sky and um, close to each other. No, no, sunlight can't get through it. It is usually gray in color. It's gray in color and uh, it can actually bring down little rain also. Then lastly, we have the cirrus cloud, which is a high level cloud. Uh, it is wispy or feathery like like uh, the feathers of birds it is usually long and it is what very thin now it's formed of ice crystals so these are just the characteristics and so once you look at the cloud and you can bring out some of these features from it then you are really good to go lastly uh, we look at measuring cloud measuring cloud how do we measure cloud? Now, clouds are usually measured in octas, which is eight. And um, zero octas is equal to clear sky, and eight octas means total coverage. So if you look at this, it gives you um, an idea of what it is. Um, so now, let's look at when you want to measure cloud. You look at the cloud by your eye, or you take photographs. Usually, it's better you take photographs now, once you've done that, you identify using a chart, table, book, picture, or internet. That means you identify the type now that we just looked at earlier. Then the total, the number of days with different types of cloud, if you take it for different days. Now, you use your grid like you have here, a grid of eight. Now, so use a grid to see how many eight, how much of sky is covered. Then you work out the average for cloud cover. Then you check every day, check at the same time. And you can now present using a pie chart or bar graph. So lastly, we said we're looking at um, weather graphs. So weather graphs is quite very simple to interpret. So you find that a climate describe the weather uh, condition and meteorologists work out the average temperature and rainfall for a particular place for each month of the year. So a metrologist are individuals that study weather. Now this information is presented on a graph uh, where rainfall is presented as a bar graph and temperature is a line graph. So take note of that. 
Now, so if you look at this um, graph, it's a combination of both precipitation, which is uh, rainfall, and temperature. Now, the temperature here is represented using this line graph in red color, while the rainfall is the bar graph. So if I want to look at January, I find out that the rainfall is around 60 millimeters and the temperature is also around um, we have 7.5 degree celsius so that's it so you should not make the mistake of taking data for precipitation to represent uh, temperature so you should always take note of how the units are being arranged on the graph so if you look at these two uh, let me say for example july if I take data for July for temperature, is this value here, which is around uh, 22.5 degrees Celsius. But the rainfall for that same July is somewhere here, which is around uh, 40 uh, and 2 uh, millimeters. So that's it. You, you need to be very careful with that. Now, how to describe slash interpret a climatic graph? Now, first you should identify seasons. Uh, there might be a hot, uh, there, might, there might be a hot season and a cold season, a wet and a dry season. Identify when they are. Then you should also be able to quote the highest and lowest temperature and precipitation and the month in which they occur. Remember to quote your unit either in Celsius and millimeters. So you work out the temperature range by subtracting the lowest figure from the highest figure. That's the range, the lowest from the highest figure. Now add the precipitation total for each month together to work out the total annual rainfall. So you can say the total annual rainfall is this, the temperature range is this, the month with the highest temperature is this, the month with the lowest temperature is this. So from the graph, you just bring that out. So that's it. And um, usually, if you want to identify seasons, uh, this will really help you on this page. So your spring is usually March, April, and May. And summer is usually June, July, and August is summer. Then uh, autumn is usually September, October, November. Uh, winter is usually December, January, and February. So you, you look at that, it can really help you when you are classifying this graph. Like here in this particular graph of Mali, I can actually say there is high amount of rainfall during uh, the summer, which here is June, July, and August. And August record the highest amount of rainfall with temperature, with highest amount of rainfall uh, to be around See, this is degree Celsius, so I'm taking my data here to be around 62 millimeters. Uh, so that's it. It's not uh, rocket science. You should just interpret it. But where you shouldn't make mistakes is don't make mistake using the unit. You should be very careful with that. Okay, so thank you. Next, we're going to look at factors affecting climate.